awesome book on Tars HaMeshpacha and the power of mikvah, which you are going to love. This is the only book you're going to need. Okay, so here we go. Miriam. Hi. Uh, Thank you all for coming. First of all, thank you, Zohar, for arranging this. And Jewish women influencers. Uh, Really, all of us are Jewish women influencers. And... um, Hopefully today you'll be inspired to be your own influencer in your own home with your, all your relationships. We women are lamp lighters. We're taught by the Rebbe that when we light Shabbos candles, um, it's really symbolic of our power as women to light up all the family members and, uh, and the world actually. Because we have a greater sense of uh, warmth and uh, a greater sense of compassion that helps us influence people. So I pray that after today, please God, we're going to reach new heights in being Jewish women influencers um, with all our relationships. Before we discuss really uh, how to have successful relationships, I want to really focus on a little bit on why things can be a little difficult. Why there are challenges? Why are there obstacles? Um, So let's take it back to the first couple in history, Adam and and, uh, Eve, Adam and Chava. This comes from Kliyakar who tells us what went wrong and how we can undo and rectify their mistake in our own relationships. So the story goes like this. We know that Hashem saw that it wasn't good for Adam to be alone. And he was like able to talk to the animals, able to talk to and commune with the angels and Hashem. So like he's alone. Hashem knew he needed to be needed. Hashem knew that he needed to feel like a somebody. So he said, I'm going to make you a woman. She's going to need you. You're going to feel like a somebody. But unfortunately, he was in his own psychic warfare of still not feeling like a somebody, battling the inner struggles of becoming, And he closed the door and pretty much didn't even much talk to her. So much so that even the Torah command from Hashem at the time was, tell your wife this law about what to eat, what not to eat, this tree, not that tree. He didn't spend much time talking to her to tell her that. And so that's why she didn't know. And she got confused. Well, her, in her state of psychic warfare, of not feeling like a somebody, somebody didn't make her feel loved, she fell prey. Hmm, maybe this fruit will make me feel happy. Maybe this Gucci bag will make me feel like a somebody. And she gave into the need to fulfill some kind of void because Adam wasn't giving her that. So we see that today we're kind of sometimes going through the same thing. So many challenges sometimes these days, so many people in their own inner struggles and then taking it personally after because they feel like, hmm, he's not paying attention to me. He's not talking to me. He's basically in his own world of struggling, trying to feel good about himself. And so then women take it personally many times, and so they get distracted, they do other things, they fulfill their world, maybe the neighbors and maybe doing this, and, and then there's a vicious cycle. Then the man ends up having feel hurt, and they're not a support to one another. Whether it's relationships between man and wife, whether it's between children and their parents, the list goes on of how so easy it is for us 
to take their rejection personally and then our emotional well-being begins to be a little frazzled our ego starts to push our buttons and then end up either distancing ourselves or worse reacting negatively because we're feeling hurt we see that the teaching in Hasidus is that God purposely created this chaos and this struggle in relationships. Hashem gave the woman a part of her soul that's 365 degree opposite of her husband's. Purposefully. Purposely to make it a little difficult to get along. Purposely so they're going to have to work through the issues, bring God in. And, uh, and that's why we have the mitzvah of Shalom Bayis. That's why we have the mitzvah of creating peace. If there was no chaos, then, so then what, what's the mitzvah? So, good evening. his new phone is alive. I know, I just want to add. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, we have some background, beautiful neshamas wanting to come on board. We all want to come on board to get to that new height in our relationships. So God purposely designed marriage to be not so easy, the Rebbe says. In fact, there's a pasuk that says, Matza Isha, Matza Tov. Hashem, when we, when we learn this pasuk, He's giving us a big message. What is this pasuk? When someone used to get married, they, they would say, Oh, you found a, a woman? You found good? Like, no, is it good? But it was not that only. It was a message for us today in our relationships. Matza Isha, Hashem first helps you find your soulmate, and He helps you find the good. Literally, He gives you part of your transcendent soul. It's a type of wisdom that you like. have this like, blinking like wow feeling this is my other half i can't live without them but then after marriage guess what matza tov now you have to find the good you have to work on getting that extra wisdom that extra transcendental part of your soul to find the good in the other so how do you do it how this is like a, a, a secret here because most of the time we think maybe oh, if he only would, I guess he doesn't love me. When is he going to change? Oh, maybe he hid things from me before I got married. Hashem hid things from us before we got married. He put the blinders on by bringing down this extra terrestrial part of our neshama called the chaya of our neshama. And this is the type of koach, the power for us to be able to see the good in, in everyone, especially our spouse. So how do we get the chaya back? So that we can now see more good in them like we had before. Well, you know if you have something like a cup and it's stuffed with garbage? Well, you have to get the, the stuff out of there so that there'll be room for like a fine line. So we need to get rid of our anger, our sadness, our judgment. We need to get rid of our anxiety, our oh, frustrations and everything on top. And then we remove these barriers, then there's space for Hashem's to come flowing down. Then our mind starts to be able to see the good. So when we make room, when we're not all over the place, when we're not demanding, when we're not hurt that they did this and they did that, that happens. There's no room for the Shrina. Also, now, the word Shrina has another 
way of describing her. And that is esh ochelet esh, which means fire. This holy fire of the Shrina will eat up the unholy fire of the other. And we're talking about everyone's relationship, not just in marriage. Meaning, if I work on myself, I remove my ego, my bitter feelings, my judgment. The Shrina then rests in my home. Then the Shrina, which is the holy fire, will eat up the unholy fire of everyone in my family. In fact, it will begin to eat up the fires, the unholy fires of the whole world. Because more of God's energy is down here. So the idea is that many times we feel like we have to tell them, we have to show them, we have to say they can't get away with that. We have to make our point. Like we're not going to go to sleep till this is discussed and we will, no, not necessarily, especially when you're not angry. And when you are angry, you have to like try your best to wait. Wait so the feelings that you have that are percolating calm down. Maybe wait a day. Then discuss it more with calmness and with wisdom. I tell people, we have to be more like ambulances. We have to like, first of all, like see the signs in our body, like wee -oo, wee -oo, you know, like the ambulances. My face is starting to get upset. You could feel it like the heat or my nose or my stomach. You could feel in your body when you're about to lose your cool. So you have to like say, no, 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 I got to get out of here. Let me get out of here. Me? I'm not gonna solve this problem. The Shekhinah will help me more than a zillion words that I can say right now, especially in the heat of the moment. Because when the Shekhinah comes and eats up the unholy fire, guess what happens? You see, women have amazing wisdom. They have five levels of wisdom. And that's why in the name of the word in Hebrew, Isha, is He in the woman's name. Now the husband has the letter Yud. Now he has ten, but... His aren't developed, they're very puny, like a little yud. The hay is expanded, but only five. The man has ten, but puny. And when the holy fire resides in the home, the melding and melting away of the negative causes the melding of the positive, making Hashem's name. So what's missing in me, I will get from him. And what he's missing, he'll get from me. Again, when there's the shrina, when there's peace, when there's respect, when there's honoring one another. You see, we can learn to relax. We can learn to not be as verbal in our expectations. We don't have to work so hard on fixing them. All we have to do is focus on fixing ourselves. That's why every day there's a prayer we say, And we're saying this right in front of the prayer, First of all, like, if you're going to pick somebody's statement, pick one of Kiva's. Why? Matovu, if you remember, this was Bilam's curse. <laughs> okay, it ended up being a blessing, but it originally was going to be a curse. So why, when you're talking about, how am I going to have Avas Yisrael? How am I going to love everyone like myself? If oh, I remember yeah. the secret of this Bilam's curse, blessing. What does he say? He says, oh... Yeah, what does he say? He says, oh my gosh, you, you amazing people. All the tents, thousands of tents, and there were no two doors of a tent aligned. Why? Because if one would open and the other wouldn't open, 
oh my gosh, look at it, she's not modest, or oh, they have a TV, or no, they have this. They, this is the power of our neshama, that we were so modest that we didn't put our two doors aligned because we didn't want to see the other's imperfections. So you want to have Avas Yisrael? You want to have the ability to love another like yourself? Remind yourself, don't look into their tent. Think about it. How many times we get so frustrated with someone, again they did that again, but if we look in our own tent, we look in our own life, is it that easy for us to fix ourselves in a minute? Yet, but when they do it, and they fall prey to the same behavior again and again, they don't love me. Or, how did I marry them? Or, I don't want to say worse. There was a story, Mendel Fudafest was in jail, and actually, it was an interesting story. He was there, and there was like a cat and mouse chase between the inmates and the guards. The guards would notice that, the, that they were playing with the cards. The, everything was confiscated. So they tried to confiscate the cards again, but then they left because they gave up. They couldn't find the cards. Well, guess what happened? The guards, after they left, Mendel Futafas said, are you doing witchcraft? Because like, where were the cards? Because every time they would pop up again. He says, oh, we're thieves, we have quick hands. Every time the guards would come in, we, we snuck it in their pockets. And every time they left, we snuck them out of their pockets. They never got to check their pockets. So Mendel Futafa said, this is a lesson in life. Every time people are like looking everywhere else. You're not good, you didn't do this, how can you do that? Get hurt from it, ego. But if they would only look at their own pockets, they would realize change is not easy. It has nothing to do with love. It has to do like the time of Adam. They're in their own psychic warfare of trying to feel like a somebody and they might be drowning. And instead of us snuffing their light by making them feel even more of a loser, again, whether it's a child, whether it's a in-law, whoever. We have to first feel viscerally the struggle that we have in changing ourselves and then realize they even more because we have the power to bring out the light. They are more dependent on us. So we see Humility goes a long way with marriage and any relationship. Compassion. I say to people, you see a stuck puppy under the car. Do you get all mad? Ugh, stuck. I have to help you. No. What do you do? You're like, oh my gosh, it's stuck. You feel bad. You don't take it personally. And you do what you can to help be that friend, to help be that kind of like a cheerleader, giving them support, giving them help. I'm telling you, there's so many relationships going sour in so many different ways. You know, there was a story that um, really, really helped me, take me to the next level of being quiet. This is Eliyahu Anavi's story. When I heard this story, I was not the same person ever again. Eliyahu Anavi is running for his life. He's hiding in the mountains. And he's tried. He's tried. He was so zealot for Hashem. He was so on fire to get the people to wake up. And all of a sudden, Hashem causes like this amazing earthquake of rocks, bolting, breaking, shattering. 
and there was a voice that said, you will not find me there. And all of a sudden, a whirlwind, and again, the bus call, you will not find me there. And then there was a still, soft voice. And Hashem said, there you will find me. Next thing, Hashem says, maybe if you would have listened more to the people, maybe if you weren't so vociferous, maybe if you weren't such a zealot for God, in the name of God, just maybe they would have listened more. And then all of a sudden, Eliyahu and Navi was taken to the next world, and Hashem had to find someone else. God wants peace, even in our desire, our holy desires, to help our soulmates, our children, the world. We have to know that there's a way, and there's another way that's just really sabotage. There's a pasuk that says, in, in Tehillim, in silence righteousness do speak. Yeah, you can give them the silent language and that's like not what I'm talking about. I'm talking being proficient in the kosher language diet and beginning with silence. Because if you're silent, then you could speak righteousness. If you're silent, you could calm your heart down and say, maybe it's not the right time. Maybe tomorrow. And maybe tomorrow you realize, ah, nothing. Maybe it was really important, but now you can think through and, and then really like be able to speak righteously. If we can't, then wee -oo, wee -oo, get out of the situation. Because you know when you're feeling angry, the Yetzirah and the evil inclination is just going to take your mouth and you become a slave to its willies. It says in our Torah that we should have a goal in life to be deaf and dumb. If we achieve that, don't hear, especially don't hear with your heart because then you get hurt. Don't hear, even with your rational mind can play tricks on you and make one thing look another and making calculations that they meant it that way and you think they said it that way because they wanted to blah 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 you don't know you don't even know yourself with your Sahara's. so you can't you have to try not to see and not to then speak like as if you can't speak especially in the midst of these emotional energies. So they're behaving a certain way and you're trying not to peek into their tent. But then you, you peeked and you're saying it loud and clear. And you're tempted to judge. You're tempted to be so upset and then make your points. But what I suggest people to do is if you happen to peek or stare, <laughs> then see that negative trait is such a holy trait because that negative trait of theirs is their gem and their power of their neshama. Let me explain. The lower person are, we, we learned that Pharaoh, he was such a high soul. And we learned that Yaakov, son, Esau, the murderer, was such a high soul. If you have someone and you're dealing with their anger, they are such a high soul. They have so much fire. And if they just learned how to direct it and channel it, then they will reach the greatest heights of love of God, love of people, love. They will have such a power of... Of, of passion, leadership. Any little symptom they have is really a sign of how holy they are. So if you happen to peek and you happen to see something, have a Geula mindset. Change it. The paradigm shift in your mind is, wow, they're so holy, but they're a little stuck. And have compassion. 
You see, I go to places and I try to inspire everyone. Don't change! Like, what? I'm here. I'm coming. I want to get inspired. I want to change. I want to be better in my relationships. I say the number one step is don't change. Strengthen yourself not to be so needy, not to be as sensitive, so that when they behave a certain way, you don't change. You were happy about 15 minutes ago. You were talking to your friend. I don't know. You might have won a lottery. Who knows what? Someone comes in, does something. Bam. They disrespected you. They were nice to you. They ignored you. The list goes on. And then you change. You were happy. And now you're not. We're talking about this right now. Chodesh Elul. The time where we can make a commitment to be a Jewish woman influencer and not let other people influence us and drag us down to their level. And you might say, well, but they don't deserve it. Or after what they did to me, <laughs> there's so much that could steal you away from being that influencer from being that lamp lighter that you can be. You know, there's a story, another story changed my life and really impacted me in all my relationships. I remember the story of Yehuda and the story of Reuven. Very interesting stories. Yehuda and what he did and he gets Mashiach like he gets the dynasty of Mashiach through his seed. And Reuven loses everything, actually. Reuven was supposed to have the dynasty of Mashiach, the dynasty of kingship, and a very nice inheritance. And he lost it all. And why? Seemingly not to be believed. All his life, his mother was the second favorite. <laughs> Rachel was always in the limelight. Rachel passes away. He thinks his mother is going to be next in line. That night, he sees the bed of the maidservant next. He, Rashi says, rashly and with such impulsive behavior, moves the beds to honor his mother. And he loses it all. Yehuda, what does he do? He sees a foxy lady on the road gives in to his temptation and he gets everything. So we see that when he was about to, to, to witness the death of Tamar because of her promiscuity and even though she did it L'Shem Shemaim because she knew that the seed of Mashiach had to come from her and she kept her mouth quiet. She was like, I'm not going to say who these things are. I'm going to like let him decide if he wants to step up to the plate. So he could have said, she deserves it. I'm, like, I'm going to ruin my reputation. I won't have 700 likes. I'll lose my position in Facebook. I don't know. Like, you know, like my influence will go down the drain. I'm a leader. Let her die. But he didn't. He stepped up to the plate. He shamed himself and let himself be a nothing to save the life of Tamar and the baby. So the Rebbe says that basically the end result is what is counted. Reuven, even though it came to such a beautiful place, he wanted to honor his mother, but he disrespected his father. He showed lack of emunah and bitachon because had he had a higher level of faith, and trust in God's plan, you would say, it's so annoying, but I'm sure there's a reason. And there was a reason. There was supposed to be a baby born from that union that night, and there wasn't because he messed destiny. So he can't be a Kohen Gadol that doesn't have a moon and bitachon. So he can't, that's why he lost his, his priesthood. And he can't be a king who doesn't have self-mastery over the motions, and he rashly just doing without thinking things through. So we, the women, have to learn a lesson from this, especially. We're fighting for the house of our holiness. 
but we can't fight. We can't be zealots. We have to be more calm about it. We have to be more with chokhmah, the, the wisdom that we've been given to by Hashem. So we see, even Esther Youngrise tells us, you know, how many people do miss you as nefesh during the time of the Holocaust? to save the body of a Jew. They did unbelievable things at risk of their own life to save other people. And I remember Souls on Fire in her book when I was in a dilemma, what to do in my life, should I, you know, eight years I had been praying for a child and the miracle baby happened and I had a whole like children's museum and program and camps and Shabbatons and I'm like, the baby was kind of, you know, sickly. I was also a bit sickly. And I was just like, how am I going to continue? I felt like I had to quit. And I remember opening up her book randomly and she says, look what we did to save the body of a Jew. Look what we did to save some person that was about to be gone. So how much more that we should save the soul of another Jew and the whole world, actually. So sometimes it's so hard. They're pressing every button in us. But we have to rise above. We have to build castles around our hearts, which means like, you know how a castle has guards and it has a wall and it protects the princess? So we have to put guards, knowledge, wisdom, so that we don't get as easily affected. We don't get dragged down. We don't let them influence us. So we can be the influencer. So, but how? Really how? We're human. It hurts. Many of us are, are, are carrying a lot of psychological baggage. We get married and we think, now someone's gonna love me. Now I can feel needed, beloved, cherished. And we do so much But somehow, it's just so many obstacles. Well, the first thing we have to do, first and foremost, is get our godly soul out of slumber. We need to start the day praying. The Rebbe says that but for prayer, and this is in the Gemara, Prayers is the key to open the door for our godly soul to come out of its slumber. Literally, the soul comes back in the morning to our, through our nostrils and will stay there till we pray. Because if we don't, then the Yetzirah says, Oh, you've been gifted with a lot of fire. I'm going to take your fire and you're going to have issues you're going to be angry, and I'm going to make you. And if you have a lot of earth, and whether it's your spouse or your child or whoever's in your life, then they're going to be prone to depression. If you're born with a lot of fire, also can lead to anxiety and panic attacks. And if you're born with a lot of water element, then you're more prone, if you don't pray, toward addictions, overeating, over shopping. And if you are born with a lot of air, then it'll be hard for you to keep quiet. But these are your gifts. These are what you have that is going to, once channeled, will, will make you the amazing the shaman that you are and unfortunately sometimes but fortunately some people have all four very dominant we all have four of them but some have one or two or three or all four dominant and i know on facebook i've been 
you know, doing a lot of classes, but I go to new places and new people. So like, I, if it's a repeat, enjoy. <laughs> but this is like the basic elements that can help us understand how great we are. Our weaknesses, and when you peek into theirs, you'll see their greatness now instead of their weakness. Now, after you pray, hopefully, I just learned the other day's Tanya. Wow, actually it was today. Yes, it was today. And the last few days of Tanya, oh my gosh. Built into prayer is restrictions. Built into in the prayer process, there's like these blockages and restrictions. So that when you give tzedakah before prayer, you'll like get rid of some of the blockages. When you use the letters of your words in prayer, then you'll be able to more easily use your words with peace and harmony. When you use your fire in prayer, meaning gavura and strength, with passion and self-discipline, then you'll have more self-discipline outside of prayer and you won't as be prone to anxiety. And when you use your earth element in prayer, you'll meditate and you'll contemplate so you won't be as depressed and prone to feelings like oh, that the world is so overwhelming. So you use all these four elements in prayer. You make it your private property. You become less fragmented and you become one balanced stoic so that you can rise above the situations that are in your household and then you learn after prayer why do you learn after prayer because when you pray all these things are aroused in you and you need to cool off the passion so that because when you learn you're using the cold brain and so it cools off the passion because sometimes we fight in the name of God and we have so much passion for God that we're shaming our children in shul. How many times do we see that happening? Or at the Shabbos table. In the name of the halacha that we're supposed to do, like we know better than our husbands or, or the child that's not doing it right or whatever. Oy, 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 oy. Hashem says, throw away my name. I'd rather have peace. We have to remember Reuven, even if our holy intention is coming from such a good place. We have to be careful. And, then, and the next thing we really have to do is forgive. Learn how to forgive when we dive in shlach lanu and we're asking God to forgive us. We have to remind ourselves let me have the strength to forgive. And you know why it's so important to forgive? Because guess what? It unleashes their power of tshuva. This comes from the Sikh of the Rebbe that says that when we forgive other people, not only is it good for us because it refines our soul, it reaches deep in within us and we, we are able to reach a new level of our neshama. We get rewarded. There's so many things. When we forgive, all our sins are forgiven. Hashem like says, oh, you forgave them, I forgive you. But most important, as much as like, you know, we like these things, but most important when you forgive, woo, lots of bracha, simintov. Yes, let's raise a simintov out there too. When we do that, the soul of the other gets transformed and we make it easier for them to do tshuva. In fact, there's a pasuk, Le Yaakov Asher Padas Abraham. You know the story maybe when the kings were against uh, uh, Abraham and they were going to kill him, but he survived. And why did he survive? Hashem said, Oh, Enoko, Enoko, your grandson Yaakov such a holy tzaddik, in his merit, I'm going to redeem you. But the Zohar teaches us there's something deeper to the fact that he had merit in the future that God used for today, like in a time capsule thing, beyond time. But the teaching of the Zohar is, if you have 
this compassion. Because Yaakov represents Teferis, and Teferis means in the Sefirot compassion. If you use your compassion toward the other, you have the power to pada, redeem the other. Avraham represents chesed. Avraham in the sphere represents kindness, love of Hashem. So if you are forgiving and you feel compassionate toward them, then you have the power to redeem the Avraham, the chesed, the love of Hashem, the kindness that's buried deep within them. And then they become more refined because you forgave them, because you felt compassionate toward them. We have to try our best to make sure we take care of ourselves. Yes, we have a long to-do list for everyone. But if we're not protecting ourselves, if we're not taking the time to pray and learn, then we get weak. I tell people, you can't say you ate three days ago or four days ago or a week ago. Your body needs nutrition. So how much more so? Your soul. Your soul needs nutrition. You have to every day and every night. Feed your soul. First of all, invite it out of your constricted, confined imprisonment of the body. Every mitzvah, every mitzvah gets your godly soul out of that prison. But there's an order. You want to bake a cake? There's step-by-step -step processes, right? You don't put the dry ingredients first, and then you put the eggs in the milk, or after you put it in the oven for 45 minutes. Right? So you need to pray, arouse the godly essence. You need to learn so it'll be balanced. So you won't be a zealot using your netzach and endurant energy and gvura energy to set the tone in your house. God forbid. Because you'll be balanced more. You'll be calm because you're having a synthesis of both heart and mind. Do you know that recent research shows that prayer actually gives us this power of our mind, moach shalet alalev, like what we all say in Hasidus, the mind has the power to, to override the heart? Look, naturally we feel three to times faster than we think. That's, gen that's in our genes. That's our limbic part of our brain works three to four times faster than our rational part of our mind. So it's the way of the way we were created. But research does say and show that if we train our brain by meditation and prayer and learning, all these kinds of things, we can upgrade and move our rational part of our mind three to four times faster than our heart. And they did research to see the brains of people that would do this type of brain training with prayer and meditation. And they saw more thicker, cortex lining, more neural transmitters, meaning more cell communication between the heart and the mind. And they interviewed them. They weren't anxious, they weren't depressed, and it actually prevented aging of the mind problems. So, like, science is showing that we can do it, you know? One time I was when I was at my lowest, I, I, I can't even tell you how, like, I was so frustrated. I wanted to be this person. You know, I went to master's degree in, in, in both marriage and family counseling and psychology, and I really wanted to have, like, a better mastery. And it wasn't happening for me. And I actually crossed the street one day in this, like, feeling, and I saw a dog. And this dog was connected to a blind man. I'm like, this is a big street. Gosh, like I was like, oh my gosh, maybe I should, I was far away. I'm like, how? I want to save the blind guy. But th the picture got worse. It was a cat. I'm like, I know dogs. They, they chase cats. This blind dog 
was trained and he did not go after the cat. I'm thinking, this puny dog, this, not a puny dog, but the brain of a dog, sorry dog, but puny, I always don't like to make fun of dogs, but, um, but I have a brain of a human. I have, so that I have a chance too. And then Hasidus came into my life and helped put all the pieces together and gave me so much hope of how I can be trained better than a dog. I have an ashama, I have a road map, I have the will and desire, every part of me that wants to be the best that I can be. So I pray for everyone. Take time for yourself. Nourish your soul so that you will be able to be proficient in the language of silence. So you will have a kosher language diet and not talk as much and listen more. Feel more what they're going through. Put, the, put yourself in their shoes. Nourish yourself so that you don't put gasoline on a burning fire with your hurt feelings. Let's rectify the Adam and Chava story of our lives today. The Rebbe says good is good and better is better. There's always room for that next level. There's always room to refine even the smallest of innuendos. That look that says more than a thousand words. See yourself in a vision. Your face is calm. Your eyes are radiating love and compassion. You're standing strong. And the front lines of saying enough is enough. I'm not going to be not taking care of myself so that I can take care better of those that God gifted me with. I pray that this will be a beginning, a beginning seed of Elom. Don't be hard on yourself up till now. I didn't get Hasidus till I was, I don't know, three, six, I don't know, how many years ago? 20 years ago, almost, whatever. And it, sometimes I go, like, why? Why didn't I have it when I was a child? Why didn't I have it when I was first married? I, you can go, like, really, don't go there. Just today. Today. Take Hasidus to the next level. Take Hasidus and bury the past. Live the vision of the now. We had a class on that. And say, today I'm going to try. And I'm going to succeed. It can make all the difference in the world. Nourish yourself. Pamper yourself. And don't change. Try not to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Um, uh, if you want, we can uh, write down the questions. So, because you might feel it's private, and then I can answer it, so other people can. Uh... My nose okay. Oh yeah. Okay. So if you if you want a question to be answered in your private, you could write it down also on Facebook, and then we'll see how much more time and we could continue. Yes. Um, Starting with two. Number one, um, the, you mentioned is the Kliyakra in the beginning. Yes. So I'm just curious how this feeling to me to be a somebody yes. is, is there when we didn't have a Yitzhahara. Right. So the Yitzhahara wants to make us feel like we want to be a somebody. And that want to be a somebody is a good thing. Because that gives us our drive. It gives us a drive to be a lamplighter. 
But we have to balance that feeling. You know, I was once in a Shabbaton, and this amazing woman sat next to me, and she says, I just heard somebody say a lecture of how, like, that we really need to love ourselves and not be, like, dependent on other people loving us. And she says, you know, you see a beautiful artist making art, art, artistry, and you're like, you know, and you, you give her compliments of, of the masterpiece that she's doing. And, like, you know, Hashem is a master artist, and He makes you a masterpiece. And when you love His masterpiece, and by the way, He designed us perfectly imperfect, that's our masterpiece, because He wants us to be co-creators, so we will fill in the, what's missing in the masterpiece. So then we love ourselves more, as we're perfectly imperfect. So then we're not as needy anymore of the other to make us feel good about ourselves. I mean, we had everything in Shemayim. We didn't come down here so that they will love us, so they'll honor us, so they'll respect us. That's not what we're here for. We had all that up in Shemayim. The Zohar teaches us that we women come down. We don't even have to come down. We don't have to come down to do any tikkunim. Our husband. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'll try this time. Because the, the, we, we want to help our husbands. We want to help our children. We want to elevate the world. So when you cut the cords of this unhealthy dynamic between you and the other, whoever it is, and say, I don't need you to make me feel good about myself. Then I'm empowered to be a lamplighter. Because then my ego won't get as much involved. Easier said than done. But when you pray and your godly soul is on fire and your animal soul is now not in the picture, eventually you'll become an ally, but in the beginning it's like, what? Private property, this is mine. You're not going to use it. I am okay. I don't need the other to make myself feel good. I'm not 100% okay. They're not 100% okay. That's okay. It's okay. So you have the knowledge. It's all around your castle. So your princess stays royal. And she doesn't get touched. And she's an influencer instead of being influenced. You deplete your nourishment of your soul. Your neediness grows. Your Yetzahara says your oh, weak point. This is your weak point. Uh -huh. I'm going to get you. Just like you, the snake did to Chava. Oh, your husband didn't pay attention to you. <laughs> I will. And I'll take your faculty of your imagination and I'm going to make it run wild. Life is miserable because I didn't have this or I don't have that. And it plays on you and it eats you up and it makes you sad and it makes a balagan, as they say in Hebrew, a mess. I say to people, you have a hodlam at your door, would you let him in? Bar that door. No hodlam, huh? huh? Not in my mind. These are hoodlum thoughts, wanting to be a 24-7 roommate. And not just a, any roommate, a toxic roommate. You have no peace. Tefillah and learning Torah creates a, a protection. You know, Kriyat Yamsuf, there's a wall here and a wall there. The Rebbe said you need both. So you can go to your destination. You know the, the teaching that you have a law that you on, on the roof that you build, you have to build a gate. The Rebbe says, you have to put a gate around your mind so you won't fall. The gate is so you won't fall. So you have to protect your mind. You have to pray. You have to learn. Create that shield. And the shield will get 
will not let these hoodlum thoughts come in. So ready to be a lamplighter? Ready to be that princess in the castle? Protected and guarded? But oh, what a heroine. You want to pass the questions? I have one more. Oh, yeah, you said one more. Um, just everything you said about the name and learning <coughs> as a set um, system, how does that, like, just, I mean, mom, so practically. Oh, my gosh, yes. So many women want to sue me when I say. <laughs> no, I just. No, no, learn. you're not suing me. My husband's a lawyer. Don't worry, I'm not scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the to do list. If you don't, because <laughs> you're angry, you're sad, you're mad, you're saying things, you're all over the place, you're discombobulated. Tomorrow I do the same thing again. <laughs> no, that's one of the things that goes on. Yeah. Tomorrow yeah. I do the same thing. Yeah. They know that. Yeah. You so know, that's, that's why I wrote this book, by the way, so people understand the benefit of prayer and deep meditative concepts. Um, so it won't be. I, I'm sorry to say, Asha, I'm not boring, but like, I look, I'm more artsy type of personality and like the, 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 the same words was very hard for me. So I, I struggled with it for so many years. But once I started learning about, wow, this, wow, that, I could be creative in my journeys in davening. One day I'll focus on this meditation. One day I'll focus on that. One day I can sing it with this tune. You know, you make it alive the way you would make a painting alive. In, uh, sure. You know what I'm saying? So when, you know the Rebbe actually said, hire someone to help so a woman would pray? I think it was Rebbe Tzim Hecht. Yeah, that, that, that it was that. And Portia says, no, no. Get help so you could pray and learn. So what I used to do is I would pray with them. <laughs> and I'm kind of theatrical. And I would not roll like the Alter Rebbe would roll, but almost, <laughs> you know, clap hands and jump and sing. And so they would pray with me. So if those days I didn't wake up early, which was almost every day. Um, <laughs> and then when we'd learn, I would learn with them. And, you know, sometimes people like looked at me like, I'm, you know, back in the days, you couldn't get away with talking to yourself because there was no cell phones. <laughs> so I would be talking on the way with my children, Torah, and the baby. <laughs> and they, they said, who, who are you talking to? And I'd say, the baby. <laughs> they say, they don't understand. I'll never forget that. I go, yes, they do. <laughs> Years later, I read in Tanya, babies understand. They just don't know how to speak because they didn't eat dagan yet, and the power of the holiness in the food causes the brain to be able to make the baba ba move. Like, you know, because nobody teaches them how to speak and how to put their tongue here and there. So, like, so I would teach them, even as they were a baby, even they were in my stomach. And I have to say, people would say, like, when they see my children, and they, for those of you who knew them very young, at age uh, not even three, they could say a whole mimer by heart and they would say Devar Torahs for two hours. So My guests didn't want to come back because they would like, you know, but she didn't want to stop talking and say the Devar Torah. And my husband would say, we'll save the rest of half for later, just with the guests. Like it was midnight already. We didn't do the soup yet. So like what we do, like does affect them. And so we would let her and poor guests would never come back again. <laughs> But it was all worth it. So what we do, we have to, you know, we have to also micromanage our time. I mean, especially today, everybody's on cell. Like, you have to, like, declutter from the day's schmutz that sometimes we do. Or not schmutz, but, like... By default. Yeah, like, the, you know... Time yeah, like I, I. Does that take us away from what? what yeah, I mean, doing? like uh, back in the days, you know, when you don't have a car and you can't get places, and and so I would do everything, um, you know, through emails and and stuff like that to save time to shop because, like, you know, when you go shopping, it's like sometimes three to four hours, <laughs> twenty minutes maybe to get there. Uh, oh hi, and oh yeah, did you hear that? 
and three hours later on the line waiting and waiting and back then we didn't have a cell phone to do chitas or anything on the phone and like so I would just do it online that saved a lot a lot of time or I would double make food and uh, didn't tell people that it was frozen <laughs> and you just have to find ways to cut corners so if you do let's say a certain food that takes so much time double the portion so you'll save the time next week there's a lot of different things you could do you know the sentence when there's a will there's a way and we have to be creative in the ways that we can fit it in so how do we get off our phones <laughs> you know there is something to the phones it, it gives us happy chemicals the buzz it really is scientifically proven they got us Yes. And we have to fight it. You know they had used to have these Lashana Ra, like hour of no Lashana Ra? Yeah. So I feel like we have to start a campaign. Do you want to do that for a Jewish woman? Like two hours, <laughs> no, no phones. phones. I'll take two to four a.m. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, and do a campaign. Five you can take the idea. It's, 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 exactly. Five, five to seven. Five, five to seven minimally. Yeah. Right. When the kids are home. When yeah. the kids are home. Like three to nine. But also <laughs> when the kids aren't home because then they come home and there's no food. So maybe... Yeah. Like maybe... You have all the ideas that you saw on the phone and you have all the money. All the recipes. <laughs> and then you spend hours trying to find it. Where? What chat was that on? What chat was that? And you're like, you're really seriously still yeah, looking for it. Like who cares? Stop looking for it. You'll get another recipe or whatever it is. You have so much time wasted. I'm praying for me too. <laughs> like even a good shiur, you want to, you know, you, go, you went to one shiur, you didn't finish the end, you want to know the punchline. Like what, and you're looking and you're looking and you could have said 10 to him and Mashiach would have come already. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, but no, really, I don't even want to laugh because it's so sad actually. I mean, you look in the streets and people are like this and they're not talking to their children. And when they're talking, they're not talking to the children like when I didn't have a phone. They're really not. And, and I do like, like I'm not a nosy buddy, but I purposely go and watch sometimes. How long are they not going to talk with their children? And I'm walking past my home. And they're not talking to their children. And I want to do like some camera thing. I would never do that. I'm not a shaming person. But you know what? There's a camera up in Shemayim. Like, one time I could cry. I was, I was in my porch and I saw... <laughs> and again, I had a lot of things to do. But I watched. And I don't like to watch. I don't like to peek. But it was, I was like, hello, like, I'm watching. Like... <laughs> Now, I'm not judging. Maybe there was a crisis. Who knows? I don't know. But it's just so, so heart-wrenching that you see people not talking to each other. Someone the other day sent me a phone of their, I don't want to say, and the kids is that. She was like, should I call the Rav that he's always on the phone? That was as a mashpia. Someone asked me, sending me the video. Heart-wrenching. Anyway, let's talk about positive things. Yeah. We're on fire, right? Ah, oh, we're on fire. We love Hashem. We want all good. Let's be the lamp lighters. Let's show by example. So when you say like prayer and Torah helps in the morning, what if you have no kavana when you're praying? Does it still help? Well, we were learning in Tanya that Without kavan, it's kind of like a body without a soul, but, but you just keep doing it, you know? You just keep doing it, um, and eventually it'll, it'll happen. And by the way, in many ways, Hashem loves when you don't really feel it, and you still do it, in a way. I remember I was, I was learning in Parsha's, uh, actually, where was it? Which Parsha was it? Just last week's Parsha. Thank you. Ekev. Like, you know, we're like a heel. We don't feel the spiritual feeling like the days of yore and we feel like ugh, 
almost embarrassed, but, like, but Hashem says, wow, that's, that's to your credit. You, I, I'm, you're, you're more beloved to me that you're still doing it even though you're not feeling it, it even though it's a little lifeless. It's really like um, we have to see the truth. We have to see the truth that, you know, we can't be harsh on ourselves. We can't let the Yitzhahara make us stop doing it because we're not doing it like the way we should because that's just a tactic. Also, doesn't it say that um, if you have Kabbana, let's say hypothetically, for one sentence in the whole davening, and then yes. two weeks later yes. you have some Kabbana in another sentence. Mm -hmm. All of that adds up the way I, I don't know where it is, but I mean, I know I learned that, that yes. it all adds up and it's one unit. So, so don't be harsh on yourself. I mean, you, is it that it elevates everything? Yeah. When you say right. kavana, that's it. It elevates all the times you said that sentence without kavana. Mm -hmm. And then, then and it, it makes all of us. Yeah. yeah. Right. Thank yes. You. Thank you very much. Yes. And by the way, not many people maybe have paid attention, but I I do Tanya uh, of the day. It's called Spotlight on Tanya. I, um, we upload a lot of it. Uh, I also do Tanya videos and stuff on uh, YouTube and WhatsApp. What's so if you want to join, you can let me know. Um, but one of the Tanyas, like, it's so critical, this information. It talks about prayer being the ladder to, um, you know, Yosef, uh, Yaakov, and he had this dream, and um, before he went to bed, he put 12 stones to protect his head, which doesn't make sense, and, and then, like, you, the dream is these angels are going up and then going down, and the question is asked, well, don't angels come from above first and then go up? So the teaching is, is that the angels that were going up were the angels that are created from our learning Tzedakah, chesed, mitzvot. The ladder is the prayers. So the words of prayer create a ladder so all of our mitzvot get raised to Hashem and we create angels. Those angels go up and then the angels come back down with brachas. So what are the brachas? Everything. There's not, no other mitzvah that can change reality like prayer. There's no other mitzvah that can bring a Mashiach light today. We don't have to wait for the Mashiach light. We draw the Mashiach light today every prayer, like the shofar blowing. When the shofar blows, there's new moichin, there's new blessings that's coming down. Every day, the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, we are blowing the shofar, drawing down these blessings. But what's the best blessing? Is when our Torah and mitzvahs are then planted in our mind and our hearts like a seed to blossom. Meaning, if we don't pray and we're doing all these mitzvahs, then eh, they're going somewhere. I'm not saying eh, eventually you'll get your reward in Gan Eden, but if you want the power of your Torah and mitzvahs now, you need prayer. to The words of prayer brings up your, your deeds. And then it gets planted in your mind, and then it gets planted in your heart. Like a woman that gets impregnated by a man's seed, every person has to do this service so that God's wisdom will be impregnated in our mind and in our heart. And just like a woman gives birth, then we give birth to these healthy emotions. And these healthy emotions percolate and grow and grow. And then there's no room for the negative. I mean, science shows it. It's called neuropruning. Flood your system with a lot of positivity and the old neural pathways, the old ways of your behaviors get flushed out because there's no more room. There's so much positivity. So the layers and layers of words you know, I, I made a kind of a story up. A man goes, hard brack, breaking labor, let's say in Las Vegas, one of the hottest places. And every week, the boss notices he doesn't cash his check. And so, what happens? He's like confronted, you know, like it's been three months, I, you're not cashing your check. 
I am so tired. I'm so tired. I don't have to, I am too tired to go to the bank. We are doing a lot of work. A lot of good work too. A lot of good work. But the prayer is like going to the bank. It's like cash in time of all the koach that we need for our mind and our heart. So we could be more at peace with the people around us. That we could be pleasant, that we could be patient, we could be loving. Just like the mother, her stomach expands to make room for a baby. When you expand your mind through Torah and prayer, you can have space for another. You can have space, meaning you won't be as judgmental. You won't as be looking down at them. That's why Yaakov, when he put the 12 stones around his head, each one representing the 12 tribes, each one representing the ability to have unity and love and fraternity. What do you mean? Because it became one stone? Yeah, oneness. Mm -hmm. The, the 12 stones. So we're, when you're unifying by accepting and loving another, even with their weakness, would you get upset at a kindergarten student for not knowing mathematics of a PhD level? No. No. So they could be Gilgul 1000, because a lot of couples sometimes look at another, oh, there you go. It's so easy. They're having it so nice. Well, maybe they've been a thousand times reincarnated, and they have like a little to fix. And maybe you're a newer soul couple and you have a lot more to fix. Maybe you've been gifted with so many good qualities, like a, one closer to a Bainani, and then there's the other type of soul that's like a toenail of a soul. Like, you know, and for whatever reason, it's just so much harder for them. Maybe they had so much trauma in their childhood. You know, there's a teaching, Lech Lecha, and I don't know, like, we've been, we passed the time, but um, Facebook is still here. <laughs> <laughs> I wish more face-to-face -face one day. But, um, but here we're face-to-face, -face, so thank you, Hashem, for the opportunity. It gets a little lonely sometimes. <laughs> what, the Facebook? Yeah, because sometimes, like, you know, I do a lot of videos, and I write, and I'm counseling on the phone, and like most people, like, you know, with the organizations I'm working for, it's over the phone. So, uh, so it's like, wait, are there really people out there? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so the, the teaching is, Lech Lecha. Uh, Avram is leaving his land. And he is uh, told about all the places he's leaving behind, but not really much about where he's going. And the teaching is like kind of strange, like, you know, go talk about where you're going, not what you're leaving. It says he was commanded to leave his home, his birthplace, and meaning the house of his father, his home, his birthplace, and his land. And these th things represent what we need to leave behind so we can go to the true you. Lech lecha. Go to the real you. First, well, you might have had trauma in your childhood. Now, who didn't? I don't know. But So, you're, you're, you, Hashem is saying, you can leave the home. Whatever like home environment. You didn't get the nurture you wanted, you could leave that behind. You can leave your birthplace meaning you were born with a fiery temperament like a baker's oven you are born angry it's not your fault you can channel that and leave it behind and you can even leave behind eretz's land eretz's la roots you ran towards certain habits to escape the pain you can leave all that behind go to the real you and be a lamplighter go to the real you and conquer the world with your light 
be ready. Be prepared to leave everything behind so that we can bring Mashiach now. Because every one of us, our personal redemptions bring the ultimate redemption now. Okay, I know you wanted me to just say something about the mikvah. I'll just say one thing. Ah, This book, well, this one is about marriage. I didn't show it to you. Okay, I know some of you guys know it. You can look on my book page. But you asked me about this because this is my newest book. and, And this helps us with intimacy. Yeah. <laughs> so many times as a counselor I hear, I don't feel like going. Like the way he treated me. There's a lot of work we can do spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and psychologically to clean ourselves on the inside while we're preparing and cleaning ourselves on the outside when we're preparing for mikvah. So there's like meditation. I just want to show you such beautiful pictures. Oh my gosh, there's just really amazing, beautiful pictures of and meditations so that you prepare. I don't know if you could see it. Mm-hmm. Different gorgeous pictures of how to prepare mind, body, and soul. You'll see each one has mind, body, and soul. So you look at the halacha, and then there's like a, like a part of it that you can focus on in your mind, what you need to cleanse inside. And then there's a spiritual part of it, what you can do to get ready. And, um, and, and it, I, I'm telling you, because I, I've, I've heard so many stories that people don't, well, we'll not go there. <laughs> when was that? It came Just out now. this year. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not in the bookstores yet. Wow. Oh, um, really? Yeah, it's Amazon. In, on Amazon, though. You can get it on Amazon. I'm still waiting for the money back from these books and <laughs> the credit card that I use for this book. So I, money is kind of run low to print them. But if anyone out there wants a partnership, <laughs> uh, you can contact me and we can print them. And you'll be in your school, all the new babies that come with mind, body, and soul holiness. Wow. She wants an extra copy. Yeah. Yes, yes, I do have, I have how a few I brought. How much is the amount of that? Um, I think uh, Amazon, I think they're like 26 or something. Yeah. yeah. You so, um, yeah, Baruch yeah. Hashem. So, yeah, yeah. And I have a nonprofit organization. Anyone who wants to, um, you know, uh, can give a check and it's a tax deductible donation. And so more books are coming on the way. I'm, I'm coming out with the next book is Health and Happiness. Wow. Really? Yeah, so that's really exciting. And I actually trans, uh, with the help of a lot of help, um, made this for Goyim, for all walks of faith that wow. um, will what, soon what come up. It's a, it's a marriage book, but I, because oh. you know, like a lot of either Jewish people don't want the religious things <laughs> or they don't want Chabad <laughs> things. So I neutralize it for, for everyone so that they will feel comfortable to get the same messages, but in a very generic way. So, um, I'm so excited about that. Thank you. Thank, thank you. So thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. And uh, may yeah, we really you. reach new heights in Amazing. all of our relationships. Amen. 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 Oh, 26? Yes. 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 Thank you. Okay. What, what's your focus on? Your health? So the health book actually... Oh, just so, yeah, yeah. Sorry. oh, no, no. She just asked a question. Um, yeah, no. Just if everybody could put stuff in for, uh, in for your foot flame off. Karen Devira Bas Rifka Selma. A 22-year-old who has... They think that she suffered a stroke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, so whatever, it's a very, very mm-hmm. sequ- a serious it's, situation. It's, it's very oh my gosh. Stuck. Yeah, you have to empty it all over. <laughs> What's your name? Karen Devora Bas Rivka. In the merit of Selma. us being here together, Bas Sam, we should have a, she should have a refor shlema. Amen. Amen. And anyone else need a refor shlema? A bracha for Bukhmamis, Shaduchim, and Parnasa, and Refor Shalom Bayis. Amen. Amen. Should get married, should get engaged in Tavshinayim test. Amen. Amen. And, and if anyone needs Shidduchim, like I, I go to different places and I speak, I do Shabbatons for singles right sometimes. Right so give me your numbers and I'll. Amen. Amen. How long are you here? So I'm here for another week.
in a couple days, and then I'm going to Israel. Uh, and then I'll be back uh, in two and a half weeks. And I'll be here most probably till after uh, Sukkot. So maybe we can have another class, please, God. Before I go back to California. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. I'm so happy that you all joined. And even though uh, some of it might have been a review for you all there. It's so great. Such good reviews. Thank you. You're going to tell me where you got your information for the health book. Oh, so, yes. So this is, comes from um, Hasidic teachings, mostly, but also integrated with the medical field and the holistic practitioners. That, uh, because for, for I was very, uh, I had like a lot of physical problems, and I went through my journey uh, for like, like my whole life, but especially like periods of time, like five and a half years here, and this, that. So I searched and I searched and I searched and I searched. So everything that I used to heal me, I wrote in this book. And through this healing also helps you also go to the level of happiness. So we do both in this book. Um, but it's uh, Rebbe Rashab, uh, Quintus Avoida. You finished writing it? Yeah, I finished. I just, uh, I handed it to the publisher. Yeah. Who publishes it? Um, I have different publishers. Uh, uh, Rabbi Chaim Miller did the uh, marriage book and the, uh, and the uh, prayer book. Uh, Jewish woman... Uh, Unite, uh, really? yeah, uh, Nahama Labor and her team. Wow. She did the Mikva book. Maybe she's there. Thank you, everyone who helped, and a team of members uh, really that helped. Uh, Are you going to speak again while you're in Canada? Yes, I'm going to speak next Shabbos, not this Shabbos, at uh, 12 in the afternoon, right after davening at 770. Um, and then, Bezrat Hashem. Um, <laughs> Oh, and I, I know Facebook on Shabbat. That's why you buy books. Where are you um, yeah. where are you staying? I'm staying in my home. Okay. <laughs> in our yeah, I have like two, kind of two places. Oh, you have a home here and then yeah. in California? Yeah. I thought you were in Cal moved to California. We did, but like some destiny things come up and we, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we had weddings and we had cool. uh, other things so um, you go yeah. to you're going to Israel like so yeah so I go out to Israel thank sometimes so much. once to also three times a year for hosting us things. so I'm just like yeah, yeah. Thank different you. places thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. exciting. Wow. Very exciting. Oh, right. so. By the way I also have ten children's books that are translated in Yiddish, nine of them and one in wow. Hebrew and they're Hasidic books. There's chapter one of Tanya Fire, and you could look also there. My kids um, love your books. On <laughs> They're on Amazon, yeah. And some in the bookstores here locally. I don't know what's uh -huh. left. But when do you sleep? Are. Do you ever sleep? Or? So you see, I... <laughs> <laughs> How do you manage? <laughs> for years and years and years when I was sickly and I couldn't sleep and kind of trying to get my mind off of my suffering, I would write. Mm. And um, so it was like many, many years ago, a lot of these uh, writings. like And, and, research. and well, research. Yeah, because like I would years and years give classes, so I would write and put it on a... On, on a file, and then like one time I was reviewing to teach a class, and I'm like, where's the end of this? And it was like 200, 300 pages each file <laughs> of years of notes. So I said, why should it stay in the computer? And then Mumbai happened, and I said, whoa, I better get this out because, you know, I don't know, who knows, you know? <laughs> God forbid, God forbid. So it, it like, it kind of wow. motivated me. Because I was going like, well, after the kids are married, wow. you know, like, you know, I'm too busy now. So, and Hashem did miracles every step of the way. Like, you know the story where Moshe, you just, you know, did the gold of the menorah? Like, I right. it just, like, it really was a lot of miracles. So I, like, you just decide to do something, and you'll meet someone, and, wow. like, it'll be a miracle. Mm. So, Amazing. Cool. You were talking about your mom. Yes, thank you. Elo, Elo, the king is in the jobs. field. We're That's about right. to press. So, Anila Jodid Lee, that's... Remember... There's another pasuk that is um, luchot. No, Aaron for Aleph. Aaron Lamed is luchot, and then Vav is for the uh, oh the shverim luchot. Yeah, shivrei luchot. So it means that Elul is about remembering the broken tablets. 
remembering that the broken tablets were in the Holy of Holies, remembering to accept your brokenness, mm. yes. that God loves it. Like, He knows you're broken. He made you, like, imperfectly imperfect. And accept it. And that's like a half a cure. Because, like, when you're so upset with yourself and you're so broken... Like, you're choking yourself. It's like, you have anxiety, and you have anxiety that you have anxiety. <laughs> you're depressed, and you're depressed that you're depressed. And it just doesn't guilty, give you... Yeah, <laughs> right. and you're guilty, and you feel guilty that you feel guilty. And then you're like, you know, stuck. So part of the, like, let go. So that you have the breath to step a little ahead. And do what can be done to get better. You know, one time I was... I was, um, I was teaching, you know, I, every once in a while I was teaching therapists at Nefesh International and every time I get to also go to be trained while kind of uh, spending the days there and uh, one of the classes I remember seeing there was uh, a video, a small video clips and one video clip was a boy scared a wagon in the middle of the road with a monster and he wasn't moving. The other clip was the boy, the wagon, the monster was in the wagon and he was going forward. Mm -hmm. And the boy was going. Miriam, do you still have those guides from a hundred years ago? That we put in front, of, that we put in front of our sitter. Oh yes, I did bring that. Thank you for reminding me. Oh, those are so what, good. What yeah. Like what to think about when you're davening each oh. part, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so. Oh, I need the. Yeah. <laughs> stickers, need right? Yeah. Stickers. That's good for the busy people. Back here. Wow, I know it has to. I think the one that just what the doctor ordered. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I can send it to you, and you can knock on my door, and I'll give it to you. But I see that I thought I put it in this one, but I, but I do have this. This is some of the reviews of the class, and whoever wants it um, could email me, Miriam, you shall me 18 at gmail.com. I purposely don't like to put it out front because then people don't pay attention. <laughs> you can read it as a review. This this class, right? Yeah, a little bit of it, yeah. And some of the stuff in my book. I, we didn't cover all of it. You could pass them down. Miriam Yerushalmi 18. Miriam Yerushalmi 18 at gmail.com. I can send you the sticker, but it's actually a physical sticker. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened. That is really weird. I like really spent time packing it. I guess because you're going to have to come to my house. <laughs> or we have to do it another time. I don't know. There's some reason. You can get to California. No, no okay. I'm going to She's on Eastern Parkway. Park. She's not Parkway. Wait for my mixed book. Yes, I'll autograph it. Oh my gosh. Let me see if there's any questions out here. Wait, what was your email again? Oh wow, Baruch Hashem. My email is Miriam You Shall Me 18 at gmail.com. Can I ask another question? Yes. So like I know like in Turkey Alvo like it says like see a glachman shtika or something. Yes. But like I also heard that if you don't say positive oh. words, it's kind of like lush and hard. If you had no, no, the no, chance no. to build some art and you did it, like oh for that sure. Is. So like for how sure. do you find the balance like between like like I, it's like better to express yourself and like to stay silent. So like right. Oh definitely, don't be silent when it's good things. Definitely keep praising, keep finding catching opportunities, even kind of white line. Oh, I saw that you were so good to your sister. Uh, I noticed that you struggled uh, not to give in to the Yetzirah. You know, um, any opportunity for sure, but not that then they're, they're gonna go, yeah, right, kind of. You know, it's too much. It's everything in balance, but definitely use. You know, and it was saying that speech. There's a pasuk that says bina yitera. Right? Women have an uh, uh, extra level of bina. Women is malchus. Malchus is speech. When you speak good words, you increase your intellectual capacity. You tap into a higher level of wisdom that you were not gifted with. 
So speaking words of Torah, speaking your prayers, speaking yeah, praising, yeah, very, um, you literally increase your mental capacity. We all need more, right? Let's go for saying more positive things. So I don't see anyone uh, asking a question here, though. So if speaking increases your intelligence, why do they say it's better to be quiet and that means you're intelligent? When you're upset. When you're upset, yeah. So like... They say even like, you know how you wouldn't disperse your coins, like, like let's say you had a million coins. So like your words are like coins, so you don't want to randomly disperse them that, you know, if it's not something positive. But positive? You have endless amount of coins to speak positive. Like, use your power for good. Yeah. Um, how do you spell, everyone spells Miriam differently. Oh, M-I-R-I-A-M-Y-E-R. Wait, uh, oh, sorry, I'm going too fast. M-I-R-I-A-M, and then Yushan? Yes, Y-E-R-U-S-H-A-L-M-I. Mm-hmm. 18 at gmail.com. But it's not Miriam Salami. <laughs> Although it'll be corrected to that. <laughs> So, um, all right, so I want to talk about the power of visualization and the power of meditation because that's another key point that's going to help you be who you want to be. The brain does not know the difference between past, present, and future. You cannot wait your brain. If you visualize yourself, track good, design good is really true. You can visualize yourself calm with them. You can visualizing. You can visualize yourself being more loving and and then see them responding in kind. We have the power to influence the other when we have visualization. So I say every morning when you say Modani and you wake up so grateful, Every night when you go to sleep, when we do your cheshbon and nefesh after Shema Amita, say Hashem. How do you want to build the day at Modani? Visualize. And how do you want to do a tikkun? Visualize what you could have done. How you want to be tomorrow. So you have two moments in the day when you'll have every excuse to stay a little in bed longer. <laughs> you want to stay in bed longer? Like... Okay, it's our, let's go in. And then do a little visualization. Right before you go to bed, do a little visualization. And that will help your relationships go from good to better. Okay, so blessings to you all, and I hope to see you again. Bye-bye.